Okay, so as the year is ending and we are entering into a fresh new year, I thought of sharing three advices for all those who are working in intensive care unit and emergency department, especially the new joinees ones who have just entered the field of critical care, whether they are doctors, nurses or paramedics or any healthcare professional who is dealing with the critical patients. And these are based on my experiences and I found them very useful. So the first advice is find the why. It means that whenever you see a patient in your intensive care unit, always try to find out the why. Why this patient is in ICU? For what things we have kept this patient in uh, intensive care unit? Like suppose you have kept a stroke patient in, in intensive care unit. So every stroke patient requires ICU? No. It may happen that this patient is not protecting the airway or it may happen that there is a slight chances of midline shift in this patient and we need to take the patient surgery. So that's why we have kept the patient in ICU. Suppose a patient has developed hyponatremia. So why hyponatremia? It's not just about correcting the hyponatremia, but you need to find the cause. Why? Suppose you have a patient with liver failure. So every liver failure is kept in ICU? No. Maybe it's an acute fermented liver failure whose PT has got deranged. Uh, now the patient has developed hypotension. So what is the cause? Why this patient has developed hypotension? Whether it's hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock or distributive shock. So why, why this particular problem we are, uh, the patient is developing? Uh, it, it, it also applies to your investigations also. So once you are thorough, or once you find out the why this patient is having this thing, you will be able to correct in a better way this why means you will be able to know what are the causes for this how it can be treated there are standard protocols so once you have got to know the why of the patient you will be uh, the treatment of the patient becomes a little more uh, comfortable and easy so just don't treat the report just don't repeat the uh, treat the condition always try to inquire why this is happening what is the cause behind this now the second second advice is do not take procedures emotionally. What, do you, what I mean in, uh, about this is, do not be very emotional about the procedures in, in, the, in which, uh, the, the procedure which we do in the ICU. Like airway management is required, putting an artery line, central line, other things are required in the ICU. But it may happen that most of the places right now, they are not under USG guidance, they are done uh, in a traditional way. So it may happen that you may not be able to intubate the patient on the day you manage your embu. It may happen that you know, we are not able to put an arterial line or central line because of some reason. So do not take those, those things emotionally. It, it is our dictum in our ICU that if on the third attempt we are not able to do that, I take help of my residents or team members and they help me out and we get it done. If, and they also, if they try for the third time, if, if they don't uh, get it properly, they take help of others. So it is a thing which don't need to be required to be taken emotionally, very emotionally. It is required, but if it doesn't happen on that particular day, it may be a bad day for us and it may be a good day for another one. So not a, also, do not flaunt these procedures also. Suppose you get the procedure which your colleague was not able to do when you did the procedure, don't be over flaunted. It, it is good to be happy, but don't embarrass your colleague that you could not done and I have done this patient. So, this, so what is more important is when to do a procedure and when not to do a procedure. Suppose when it is required to do, when it required means when it is required to intubate the patient is more important rather than intubating. Obviously, it is important, but decision to intubate and extubate the uh, patient are more important. Putting a central and arterial line is important, but more than that, when to put an arterial line and when to put a central line and when to put an ICD, these are more important things than the procedure itself. So, uh, procedures are important, but don't be very emotional about that then. And the third advice from my side is always keep reading. It may happen that uh, your junior colleague or your nursing staff paramedic may give you an advice uh, which may be correct and it may happen that your senior colleague or senior consultant may be telling you certain facts which may got updated later in the guidelines like I make a lot of videos and in those videos I uh, always say that do read more about it. Why I say so? Because suppose I made a video which is 6-7 months old or 1 year old or 2 years old and now last month some guidelines got updated and there are fine changes in it so your junior uh, uh, can say that this is an updated guideline so 
your junior is not always wrong and your senior is not always updated that's that's the logic you need to keep in mind so whenever somebody tells you something don't blindly trust it take it note it down and go and read your books what is written in the text what is written in the guideline that way you will become more confident and more updated and you will be able to communicate and interact on different platform in a more confident way so these are my three advices for the new year try to implement them in your practice so you will be more comfortable more confident and you will spend a more uh, peaceful uh, <laughs> uh, time in your intensive care unit so see you next year and many good wishes to you all. Thank you.